but we're gonna discuss it anyway. <laughs> All right. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Fuck you, stream. You're not gonna ruin us. All right, guys. Welcome to episode 13 of Pardon the Dashboard. I'm your host, Sergeant Merrill, along with my co-host Sweat, who is finally back from his vacation. Yay. <laughs> Today the, with us, we have a fellow veteran and beloved Call of Duty commentator who is known for his very entertaining per personality and editing skills. Please welcome Ricky Chops. Ricky, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what made you come up with some of the crazy shit that you're a part of? Well, first of all, I'd like to let you guys know that, that uh, I'm doing this podcast without any pants on. And um, secondly, um, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to get along very well then. All right. Uh, no, um, as far as just like ideas and stuff, when I first started off, I just, I looked around the community and, uh, you know, I was like, okay, what is everyone not doing? And let me go ahead and do that. So, uh, basically my philosophy and my mentality when it comes to this YouTube thing is to just, um, fill in a void, I guess. And at the time, I guess the, the, the biggest thing that kind of blew my channel up was the, uh, keyboard destruction series. That's and true. Uh, yeah, <laughs> who'd have thought, uh, you know, uh, Call of Duty and guns and uh, women, who'd have thought that would have ever worked? I think you did. it was genius. You mixed porn and video games together. I mean, that's it's great. <laughs> and at the time, I was like, why hasn't anyone else done this? So let me uh, let me just roll with it. So <laughs> and uh, what's the, what's the challenge in the keyboard destruction series? What's the biggest challenge uh, making that 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 series? And really, what, oh, what's man. it all about? Just explain it real quick. Basically, I um, I rate porn stars, but to be honest, the numbers don't really matter because everyone's idea of a perfect porn star is subjective. You know, it's all about your own personal taste. But for me, it's about the comedy. It's about how I, um, I guess, look at these women and uh, describe their features. And it, it's about the hardest part, to be honest, is coming up with different ways to describe the same thing. So, so explain the research process for this for this series. Without getting too graphic, <laughs> without getting too graphic, uh, you know, people, they'll post, they'll post one of their favorite porn stars in the comment section of the video, and I'll go ahead and check her out. I, I trust me, that's the hardest part, the research part. Um, <laughs> not, because, not because of, you know, <laughs> I, I don't want to get too graphic, but just going out and finding a good, a good uh, porn star to review is, you know, it's difficult. And um, I try to look for unique porn stars, porn stars that I haven't, you know, like if you have porn star A and porn star B and they're they're kind of the same, there's it's not going to make for a good uh, episode, I guess. So, um, you know, like you have somebody like who's really unique, like Gianna Michaels. She was on the first episode. She's really unique because she's just I mean, anyone who's seen Gianna Michaels, just, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like you could I don't know, but that's the hardest part. Just just finding different ways to describe the same thing, you know, OK. So what are the chances of having an actual porn star on the series in the future? Uh, well, I mean, if the channel keeps getting as big as it does, hopefully that'll be a feature. Hopefully that's, that... Yeah, that's incentive enough for everybody. Everybody go subscribe to Ricky Chop so we can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, let's move on to our next topic because it's uh, super controversial, man. Uh, the official video came out this week for the <laughs> COD Elite paid subscription service. It's optional. It's not something that you're going to have to pay to play, um, but it's going to offer a bunch of additional services, but it's very controversial because the announcement video has, I want to say about, an, man, like a, like an eight to 10 dislike ratio. It's, it's really bad. And, uh, it's, it's really controversial. What do you think Ricky chops about, about paying for additional services, uh, like extra statistics and, and just, you know, just extra things on top of the game. What do you think about that? Well, to be honest, um, you know, I don't, I don't really, I don't really follow gaming as much as you guys. You know, I just, I just buy the game and I just play it. But when I heard about this, I thought, well, you know, if you're really hardcore, I don't, I don't think it's that bad of an idea. If you're really into the statistics and whatnot, I don't see why. I mean, how much is it, first of all? Does anyone know? And see, all they've said is that it's going to be cheaper than most online entertainment products, which is pretty damn vague. I mean, they, they could be talking about Netflix, but. Netflix can be seven dollars a month. It can be eleven adult, eleven dollars a month, and still, I mean, it's very vague. We don't know yet. I don't uh, personally. I don't see a problem with it. Um, I personally would not buy it because, again, I just play the game. I don't really care about stats and whatnot. Um, so I don't see a problem with it. I think it's fine. 
Yeah, one of the problems that I've seen with it is that they're they're raising up the the issue of, of competing with what's already established. So they have something on this on this service that's called a program guide. I could be butchering uh, the terms that they're using, uh, but basically it's talking about putting Call of Duty Entertainment products on their own website uh, that might compete with uh, YouTube. Um, what do you think about that? You mean you mean like like commentators or I mean what? What 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 vague. exactly what exactly is a Call of Duty video product? It could be anything. It could be <laughs> it could be a, a keyboard destruction video, or it could be oh sweet, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but why compete with YouTube? Why you yeah. know why do that? Why not just uh, facilitate you know what's what's already established and build on it? And uh, I think they're they're trying to like Woody's gamertag said they're trying to create internal successes for stuff that's already successful externally. Uh, well, here's my thing. You know, I'm trying to look at it the way Ricky does, you know, just go buy the game and, and play it. Because a lot of the guys that watch, you know, that watch PTY, a lot of the guys that watch all our videos and stuff like that, you know, they just want to go out and play games. And then the only reason they, they watch all these things to get better at games, to find out a little bit more. But not the majority of people aren't experts on the matter. They really don't, you know, they really don't care this way or that. So in that sense, you know, why would you charge for something that other services like Bungie have already done for free? But to me, the, the, the points that some of the people they're making, like the things that, that Fuzzy says for making, the things that, um, that David Bonhar say, you know, that, that they're charging for a, for a service and not just a product, you know, when everything has increased, all the prices for all these products have increased year after year. And one thing that hasn't is the cost of these video games. Uh, every year, you know, they're 60 bucks. They've been 60 bucks as long as I can remember having an Xbox. And, you know, I, I can't fault them for especially being as large as they are for charging for something that you know people are going to buy. I mean, it's such a huge series. It's always it's such a huge success for the past what 3 4 years. You know people are going to buy it and you know the cost of everything else is going up. I can't I find it hard to chart that find it hard to fault them for charging for it. That's just me. I know I'm going to buy it because of how much time and effort I put into the, like into Call of Duty. I mean, how many days I have played. It's going to be worth it for me, but for the you know the average gamer, or for the guys who don't spend as much and just casual or whatever, you know it, it's hard to. I'm, I'm trying to get a sense of them. You know why would we pay for that? So yeah, I don't know. Actually, it's both ways for me. Actually, I have a another idea about that. I think it'd be a much better sell if you know a new Call of Duty wasn't released every year. I don't know. That's, that's true. I that's think that'd be true. a much better sell. But that's very true. That seems intuitive. I may be wrong about that, but I don't know. I think the, the statistics that they're offering, the organized, very detailed statistics with really cool graphics is something that I'm really interested in. I would pay $3 a month for that, you know, even if it was on the, wasn't on the official Call of Duty website. I'd pay for that externally just because I think it's cool and that's something nice to have, you know, where you have all of your Call of Duty statistics, not just from one game, from all the games, organized in one spot. I think that's pretty cool and that's worth it. Some of this other stuff I think is a little bit of a waste of time that they could be uh, putting into other areas, but that's just me. And actually, if you look at it from the, the point, of view, a point of view of a video maker, a guy who's, you know, doing commentaries and whatnot, it might actually be worth the investment, uh, depending on what kind of services they're offering. That's true. Um, so, well, I don't absolutely. Know. I, think it, I think if you want to do this on YouTube, if you want to post videos on YouTube, it's going to be a necessity. But um, let's move on. There was in, uh, some information leaked today. Uh, about Modern Warfare 3 and new perks and new kill streaks and some of the stuff that's going to be left out of the game. Like, uh, supposedly there's no commandos, supposedly there's no nukes. And yes. there was this rumor of team perks, and now there's other rumors saying that maybe somebody's saying, oh, no, 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 this is all a little bit too soon. It's not true. So what are your thoughts, guys? I mean, there's some, there's some team there's stuff. Truth behind like, it. There's yeah, true. I, I can definitely agree with that. I mean, there has to be something there for these guys to... It has to be some substance for them to release it. But what else, uh, Ricky? What What are you most excited about? Have you had a chance to see some of this stuff? Uh, not really, man. You got to bring me up to speed a little bit. <laughs> okay. Well, so, it, so one of the biggest so. things that they're introducing is is team perks, and uh, these are perks that the entire team can work toward do, uh, during the game. And that's a little vague. They need to they need to expand on that a little bit. But it could be anything from like attacking an objective, um, or it. Um, you know, it could be anything from like getting a certain amount of kills and you'll start uh, winning these uh, team perks. And some of the team perks are stuff like stopping power, blast shield, health regen, uh, stun protection. Um, 
And I think that's going to add a new aspect to the game. It's going to make it more team oriented to where you're going to want to plug in your mic and not play by yourself because the success of your team is going to directly impact impact how you do as an individual. I man, I hope that's true because as it is now, you know, I hop on Xbox Live and hardly anyone communicates. It's all just a big uh uh, t- uh what is it? kill whoring session basically. Yeah. So on every game mode you're, you're absolutely right that's all anybody really seems concerned with Un- unless you go in there with a full squad or not even maybe a half squad you're, you're not generally most casuals or most uh gamers on there they they don't want to talk they don't want to expend that extra energy to um you know focus on actually winning the uh objective or the game yeah. so well here's some here's a new perk that uh definitely has some attention on it it's uh it's called recon and this could be this could be the way to, I guess, counteract ghosts. And what it's going to do is gives you a special kind of radar to spot enemies. Uh, and it's most likely going to counteract those people with ghosts. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I've got a good way to counteract ghosts. Don't put it in the game. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best way. That's true. Um, but no, um, I think that's... If they put ghosts in the game, then yeah, there needs to be something... There needs to be something in there to counteract it and balance it well because it's ghost yeah. everybody it seems that everybody I get killed by whenever they're camping in a corner and I know I make fun of campers a whole lot I mean I don't care that much but I think it's funny that somebody would play that way anyway uh, I digress but it's just <laughs> um, yeah every time I get killed by somebody who's camping in the corner they're they're usually you know running ghost and that's like the best I don't think there should be one dominating perk in any slot that's true. Personally. Yeah, well, it looks like they split up ghosts. It looks like they made one where you're one perk with, that's called blind eye, where you're immune to the or just not as easily killed by the uh, the kill streaks. You know, like Ghost Pro does, where you, helicopters don't see you and all that kind of stuff that doesn't see you. And then it looks like they have another perk, Assassin, where you're immune to UAV and thermal and, and heartbeat sensors and those kind of things. So at least they made a step maybe in that direction to to at least try to not make one single perk as dominant. But it's, it's, I mean, if they make a perk, if they do that with Ghost, split it up like that, and then they make another perk, like Recon, if that's what it is, that you can, you know, especially for Ghost, you know, then I think that might be it. You know, I think that's that's what we've been looking for. I think that's something yeah, that can they need to split it. it up. I mean, they, they were combined. It's such a powerful perk in Black Ops because you're you're invisible to everything. You're invisible to the radar. You're invisible to all the kill streaks. you know, except dogs. Here. I think what I what I would like to see personally would be um, perks. Well, let me see. I'm trying to think of a way to phrase this. Uh, perks that actually fully flesh out, like when you know, when you say you want to create a, a class or whatever, I would like to see perks that actually sort of fully flesh out an entire class. Like, you know, in order to do this in the game, you would have to equip this perk. And granted, it might not get you the most kills, but you would still feel useful in supporting the team but i don't know if that's even possible because i think mo- you know most players they get a kick out of getting kills yeah um, so there aren't too many players that are willing to uh i guess support the team by you know like let's say there was a medic class you don't see too many medics whenever you go play online shooters at least yeah. in my experience everyone wants to be the slayer you know that's true uh, or the sniper or, or the sniper. sniper yeah or the sniper yeah, yeah. all right um can... oh, go, go ahead, ahead. Ricky. i'm sorry yeah, well, just one final thing. If they could just, you know, make it more appealing and more attractive to be that medic or that support role, then I think they could have a very successful game on their hands. I mean, it's going to be successful regardless, but it'd just be a more uh, appealing game, I guess. Yeah, definitely more balanced. But yeah, let's go. go to um, David Vondahar tweeting about the FAMAS. And uh, he, he just asked for suggestions, if I'm not mistaken, on on what could be done about the FAMAS. And you guys have a lot. I know everybody has a lot, a lot to say about what you can do to the FAMAS. I just want to say that the one thing that I saw that, that made the most sense to me was if you have a weapon that, that is as overpowered as the FAMAS, why nerf it or why, you know, why not just, you know, try to get the other weapons up to that level so, you know, maybe everybody has that. I don't know. I'd, I'd rather I'd rather the other way. I'd rather moving the other weapons up to that level. But uh, Ricky, if you had one thing to change, you know, if you had a suggestion with the FAMAS, what what would it be? Ah, man, that's a that's a tough question. I'm not going to lie. I, whenever whenever I'm getting my ass kicked, I have a FAMAS class ready to go. 
<laughs> and I mean, I'm not the best player ever, obviously, but is I I can get some decent scores with it. Um, as far as what to change about it, um, maybe the fire rate. Maybe the fire rate. I don't. I honestly don't know that much about the game mechanics or the gun mechanics, but I would I would suggest the fire rate maybe. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know in terms of. Uh, I don't want to say the word realism, but it's the first one that comes to mind. I don't know how that would affect it. So yeah, I'm with you on this. I can't pretend to know the solution, but I can identify yeah. the problem just like everybody else. And when you're in a game and eight out of 10 people are using the FAMAS, that's a problem, you know, because this is meant to be a diverse game with a lot of different weapons, a lot of different strategies for those weapons. And when most people are using the same weapon, that has to say that something's a little bit more uh, powerful about that weapon compared to the others. Mm. Yeah, 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 definitely. Maybe, maybe increase the recoil. I don't know. <laughs> I think the recoil. I, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a game engineer, you know. But yeah, exactly. I, I think if it bounced around a little bit more, so you couldn't use it uh, like the long range weapon that it can be, um, that might help. I think the, um, the Tar Twenty One. Oh man, my phone's going off. I think the Tar Twenty One in Modern Warfare Two is a good example of a. Uh, a balanced weapon yeah it's it's a great assault rifle but i do like the ak-47 as well you know yeah. i can i can bounce between those two i also like the m4 you know um but the tar 21 is a good example in my opinion of a balanced gun i i've never used that gun and thought okay well this is overpowered no because it bounces around when you go full auto with it so yeah now see somebody in the stream just said that you should take it out altogether and if I'm I'm not sure if that's the solution, but um, it would make people use a lot of different kinds of weapons, you know, which is which is what I want to see when I get into a game. I want to see tons of different types of weapons being used, different strategies for those weapons, just diversity. You know, that's what makes it so great. You have like 40 something weapons to pick from. That's exactly well, it. I mean, OK, I'm sorry, Ricky, go ahead. Well, again, there's that that whole slayer mentality, man. Everybody wants to be the, you know, the alpha male. Everyone wants to be the, the big dog on the block. So what's <laughs> what's the best weapon in the game? The FAMAS or maybe the 74U. So yeah. they're going to go run with that. Um, I think in the next game, there's going to there's there might not be an overpowered gun, but there's there's probably going to be, you know, the one gun that everyone just wants to use because it's the best killer. It's the best uh, weapon to use whenever you want to kill. And again, it's it's about that slayer mentality, you know? Well, hopefully when Modern Warfare 3 uh, comes out with these, these new team perks, that might change a little bit of that mentality. I, I hope so, because I, to be honest, I don't like Team Deathmatch. If the objective is to just kill, then it gets kind of boring for me. I like, I like the idea of capturing flags or defusing bombs and, you know, shit like that. It gives, it gives, my, it gives my deaths, and I have plenty of them, it gives my <laughs> deaths more meaning, you know? Like, yeah. I jumped on that bomb, and yeah, I died, but I tried to defuse it or whatever, you know? All or right. I tried to cap that flag. Well, let's move into our last topic here. Now, since uh, all of us have been in the military, or are currently in the military, you're in the Air Force, correct? Ricky yes, Charles? sir. All right, and uh, Ben was a former Marine. I was a former Army. So let's talk about military tactics and, and video games. <laughs> and more importantly, <laughs> why they don't work. <laughs> What's your opinion on, on using military tactics like buddy cover me while I move and three to five second rushes. Why are those not effective in video games, Ricky? Because video games aren't real. <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically, I mean, uh, especially when you, when you go into a public match, you know what I mean? You can't get that kind of coordination and that kind of, um, I don't know, that kind of camaraderie, I guess, because there is a sense that whenever you, you practice with someone, you know their movements and you know their body language. You can't get that in a video game. And um, even when you're running with a full squad, like you can't, again, you don't, you don't know what the other person's going to do exactly in every situation, as opposed to living that out in the real world. So I, I guess it just boils down to the fact that it's a video game and what you can do with your character is very limited. So Yes. And plus there's, uh, what we were discussing before the stream is there isn't, there isn't that fear, that fear of getting hit by a bullet, because bullets are right, fucking right. scary. Right, right. <laughs> All right, that should scare. Because <laughs> uh, they they really hurt. Okay, you're not gonna take five bullets and be like, oh, that weapon's only supposed to kill me with six bullets. You know, like no, that shit hurts. And there's this level of fear uh, that you get when you when you're in battle that you're just never gonna get in a video game unless you have somebody sitting beside you with a taser going, go ahead, done, go ahead, 
Wait a minute. minute. Wait a minute. You don't you don't regenerate after you get shot by five bullets? I don't think you do. You know, no, that doesn't no. happen. <laughs> what? <laughs> Somebody lied to me. <laughs> now, Sweat, you actually tried to uh, incorporate military tactics for entertainment purposes. How did that turn out? Uh, that's exactly why I have to do uh, private lobbies, uh, private matches for almost every recording. You know, I try to do as much uh, actual game footage as I can and try to incorporate it. And it's just, it's, it's basically impossible, you know, just because yeah. uh, it just doesn't work. And, and for all the reasons we just said, you know, because, because you respawn and because there's, I don't know, because there's a promise that kills in two bullets. And uh, there's just so many different factors that go into it. And then, and then everyone says, oh, we'll just go to Battlefield Bad Company too. Cause then you use teamwork and then sniping so much more realistic and then all this kind of stuff. And in Battlefield Bad Company 2, there's got, you've got, I don't know, nine or ten people on your team, and eight of them are sniping on top of a ledge in the back of the map. And then, I don't know, but medics are, are running around and regenerating people that are already dead. And, yeah, like Ricky said, because it's a video game and because it's not real. And, and we try. You know, we try to do this stuff. I try just because, you know, I had a lot of fun. That's some of the most fun I had was in the was in the training aspect right after boot camp, uh, the Marine combat training where you just run around with your buddies and you do, you, you know, your fire and movement tactics and your, your flanking tactics and your ambushes and all that kind of stuff. And that was fun to us, you know, and we weren't even shooting real weapons. You know, we had laser pointers at the end of a gun, but well, um, go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, well, it's just not real. It's not real. Yeah, that's all. As far, I mean, I'm sure you can incorporate some of them like flanking. Obviously, that always works, but that doesn't require um, uh, I don't I don't know how to say it, but flanking, I mean, if you can distract somebody by producing noise, like in Call of Duty, whenever somebody, you know, fires off their weapon, you see a dot on the map. If you get if you get somebody looking in that direction, aiming down sight, flanking is going to work because that person's distracted. But, you know, when whenever you're talking about like stacking up on top of each other to like breach a room, that's not going to work. Yeah. You know, that's entirely different. So there are some elements that you can incorporate, but, you know, it's not like it's not like these little kids or people who play COD, they're not looking up military tactic videos. They're looking up, uh, you know, call of duty videos for, to get better. You yep. know what I mean? And see, yep. one of the biggest tactics in the military is covering fire. That's why you have the, you know, the M249 and, and the M60. Those are for covering fire. You're not necessarily going to get a lot of kills with that. You're going to scare the shit out of the, pe out of the people on the other end of it. And they're right, not going right, to be turned right. into fire at the, your people that are moving forward. That's the purpose of weapons like that. And without that fear of, of getting hit by that bullet, uh, covering fire just doesn't work. And I think I think that search and destroy is going to be like the closest you will actually ever get to. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just because like, the only fear is they just they just don't you die, die once. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, do y'all have anything else before we end uh, this episode thirteen, lucky thirteen, <laughs> of uh, Pardon the Dashboard? Uh, no, man. I think this went great. All right. Ricky, do you have anything you want to add before we cut out? Uh, no. Actually, I was born on February 13th, so it is appropriate I was on this episode. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so 13 is an actual lucky number for me. Outstanding. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, like I say, with all part of the dashboards, this is a group effort. So if you're watching the stream or listening to this on iTunes, which I'm not really sure how many people do. If you're listening to this on iTunes, send me an email because uh, I want to know if that effort's worth it. But uh, make sure you come by YouTube, check out the description because I have a lot of thank yous, a lot of courtesy gameplays that I use. And also we do have sponsors. So if, uh, if you see a sponsor in the upper right hand corner, make sure you check them out, give them some support because well, without them, it would be very difficult to do this on a weekly basis. But that's all I have for episode 13 of Pardon the Dashboard. This is Sergeant Merrill out here.